Next guest, our next speaker is Christian Melendez. Uh, let's uh, let's reach out to Christian and see if we can get him dialed in here. Okay, here we go. Going to fly out from Prague. We're going to go see if we can find Christian hanging out. Christian, can you hear us? Yeah. There we go. Christian, you are live here with us here at .NET Conf. Ooh, awesome. So welcome, and you're going to talk about CICD pipelines for Kubernetes. Great stuff. Take it away. Yeah. Um, the idea is to that you can um, create a CICD pipeline um, uh, for for Kubernetes using Azure DevOps, which is, has been rebranded to Azure DevOps from BSDS. Yep. So um, I guess I should start now. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, let me start by the, the session is going to, to start with um, saying a typical story how you will do the, the usual themes on um, when delivering software. And then I'm going to uh, suggest some things on how you can improve things. And later at the end, I'm going to show you how to actually create a CI CD pipeline. So let's start to, uh, with uh, a typical story on day one. A typical story is that they finish coding and then push changes to a control repository. Um, then someone or something else builds the app that is generated, uh, it's compiled or, or things like that, then developer um, deployed to a non-production environment. Uh, that, that task is mainly by, by themselves. They, they have to uh, have everything ready. They test in, in for example, in, in development environment, and they make sure that everything is working great. So after that, now it's time to move changes to another environment. So they're ready, they are confident that everything will keep working. But surprise, surprise, <laughs> you always have difficult uh, difficulties and not everything works as expected, uh, as you could imagine. Uh, so the many problems arise here and they have to go again and, and, and fix things and they have to uh, start working on, on, on trying to solve those problems. So I, ideally, when they, when they are trying to move that to, uh, for example, a testing environment, they will run a set of tests that are, are executed, hopefully, uh, uh, in an automated fashion. And if everything is okay, they continue with the next environment. If no, they, they will start over again. So this is a repeated cycle, but they have to uh, spend like a really good time in, in trying to move things from outside from, from their computer to a, to, a to a productive environment. So this is day two, usually. Uh, it, takes, it is not as easy as just copy paste the, the, the artifacts to, to, to the servers. So and then comes the day three, if, assuming that everything uh, worked as expected. And then sysadmin DBAs and security polls are called. Um, they are called because they need to um, check things and make sure that we don't have security holes in the application, that we are compliant with, uh, with the regulation of, of the company, the, the, the policy uh, that the company has. And the DBAs has to check that the, the scripts that we are about to deploy are working and they have, uh, we are not going to uh, truncate a table or drop a table. So they, 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 it's always good that they, they get involved. Developers then need to change code again. Uh, this is usually um, the, the normal way, if they're, especially if this is a big change. But, it's, but if, if we're talking about uh, small changes, this usually is, it doesn't take too, too much time. But let's, let's bear in mind that we're talking about uh, doing uh, big, big changes. Then sysadmins and DBAs deploy changes to production. Um, and usually, the after that, CSAN means versus developers versus everyone that fight starts. Why? Because CSAN means try, are trying to uh, have a stable environment. Developers are trying to push the changes as soon as possible because they are being pressured by management and so on. So the, the, the thing is that 
you you will have a lot of problems when there are silos and you don't have a, a good communication with the teams. So there has to be a better way, right? Uh, actually, there is. So let me let me share with you some of the the things that I've been reading about on my blog um, on how to make deployment smoother. This is based on a book that I read uh, a few years ago from Jess Humble called Continued Delivery, which I will recommend you to to to, to give it a try to to that to that book. And basically, in that book, um, uh, the the things that you will get as a recommendation is that you should automate as much as possible. Um, there are trade-offs, as always, as with everything, but um, try to automate those repetitive tasks that are, that, are, that are boring, basically. Build and pack your application only once. This is great stuff because you don't have to worry about building and compiling again in another environment. Um, that doesn't give you enough confidence that you are I mean that you are pretty sure that you're testing the, the, the code that it worked on, on a previous environment, right? So the idea of building and packing your application only once gives you that confidence. Uh, deploy the same way all the time will let you feel uh, the, the will let you feel more confident. It will increase your um, confidence on deploying things because once it works in, in development, it should be the same. It's, it should be uh, working on a production environment. And uh, I mean, I really mean with this because um, I've seen many problems with um, workshops that are not doing, um, the, that they're not applying this rule basically. Uh, they're treating a production environment really special and they think that, well, development, we can do whatever we want, we can install whatever we want, uh, let give access to everyone so they can play around with that environment. That's the developer environment. And uh, so I agree with them. Uh, it is not always a good thing that you don't have a, a way to practice your deployments to production. So as long as you have a non-production environment in previous environments, you, you'll be all good. Uh, this deploying in small batches and do it often. Uh, this is sounds like really easy, and, and actually it is, but what if I haven't finished a feature or if I, I haven't, uh, of, if my working or, in my, or, or if my code is having problems, well, there are some strategies that you can implement in your code that are called feature flags. So if you need to deploy something because uh, you need to fix something and you don't want to revert your code and create branches and things like that, you can always turn off the flag and you will be practicing that deployment. Um, uh, I've been experiencing that in, in other projects where we are de 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 deploying the, the changes to a, a big change in, in the architecture. Um, little by little, and it, it has worked for, for, for me, so uh, that is a recommendation that I can um, give you today. Choose a zero downtime strategy so that the customers, your, your clients, will notice that you have a, 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 that you are changing something. Some of those strategies are called blue-green deployments, canary releases, etc. Uh, this is the a not common uh, practice, trunk-based trunk development, meaning that, meaning that you, you, you shouldn't be using what? Oh, just humble. Yep, cool. So, um, as I was saying before, uh, the trunk based development is not usually a, a common practice. There, uh, I, I mean, I didn't know until I wrote an, an article about this topic. I received a lot of uh, comments there that why, why should we, why should we do in trunk based development? Branches are good, they they work, and as I agree with them, what I don't agree with uh, with the, the approach of having branches is that you will keep branches for a, for a long time. Um, you you could, you should keep you 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 are good to to go with uh, branches as long as you keep them short. The lifetime of that branches is short. Um, that, that, that way, uh, it is easy and it is uh, more, more, more smooth to implement continuous integration, um, basically. And that's basically the idea. Notice, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be using branches uh, never. It's just that for continuous integration, trunk-based development is a really good practice. 
Uh, finally, work with environment variables, meaning that, as, as I was saying before, you will build and pack your application only once. So how are you going to test that in other environments? The way that you're going to do that is to work with environment variables. And basically, uh, that's though these are the, the, the recommendations that I have for you. How can you do that is the trick. And that's why we have uh, Kubernetes containers. And that's why we have tools like Azure DevOps that will help you to implement all of these um, uh, practices that, that I'm talking about. So let's start with um, Kubernetes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a Kubernetes uh, quick recap. I'm not going to spend too much time here because I, I really want to show you the, the, how to create a CICD pipeline and that you can see um, what, what, I'm, what I'm meaning with all the points that I, that I, that I previously uh, was talking uh, in, in practice, right? So let's start. Why Kubernetes? With Kubernetes, it's really easy to have immutable infrastructure. You will you won't be uh, caring too much about um, this is server, server A, server B, server C. Uh, it, it won't matter because what, what will matter is that you can turn off that instance, turn off that instance, and you can spin up a new instance, a new server, and everything should uh, keep working. Um, uh, same with 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 uh, containers and product um, and pods. You can, if you're having problems, you can easily. Uh, terminate that or remove them from the load balancer and investigate there. But the idea is that you don't spend time trying to fix things as you normally or traditionally will do. Just spin a, a new server or a new container and that's it. It scale out very easily. Um, you can have a state definition in file, like meaning that um, Kubernetes is mainly based on, 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 on a state. You can define uh, your the state that you want for your application, and I'm going to do that. You can, for example, say that for this application, I want three replicas, and I want these three replicas to be exposed at a service, and that service should be a load balancer, for example. And Kubernetes will make sure that you, all the time, the application has three replicas that is exposed as a service and is a load balancer, and is public or is internal, and so on and so on. You can run local, and that means that if, if you can run local with Kubernetes, you can run anywhere. Um, now that Docker for Windows and for Mac uh, has the support for Kubernetes uh, na natively, you can, and you can create your, you can host your Kubernetes environment locally. And that's basically what I'm also going to do uh, today. I'm going to test the, my changes locally with a Kubernetes instance locally in my, on my machine, and then I'm going to create a pipeline to push that to, to another environment. Rollbacks are very easy because you just need to say, okay, um, let's uh, update the service, let's update the deployment with the previous version, and Kubernetes will make sure that you can that uh, you won't uh, have a, a downtime there because the, the, the default um, policy is that Kubernetes will uh, update the, your containers in a in a reliable manner, meaning that it will be doing running updates. Not everything uh, will drop everything and will come will bring everything up uh, again. Uh, it, it is pretty safe. Uh, you will have high availability because I was saying before Kubernetes is ba is mainly based on state. Um, how Kubernetes does that? Yeah, it, Kubernetes has HCD where it, it's a NoSQL database where Kubernetes st stores the state of, of the cluster. You will find there uh, how many nodes uh, the worker, how many workers the cluster has, uh, how many containers, how many pods, uh, how are they configured, and things like that. You can easily um, um, configure security controls for your for your applications, and you can do a lot of things, a lot of more things. So, but but I'm as this is just a quick recap. Um, uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna stop there. The Kubernetes architecture is as follows. You will have a um, Kubernetes master nodes, which this is usually called control nodes. And um, the, idea, I, I, the ideal scenario is that you have three servers here. Uh, then this control, control plane will expose an API where a user interface and a common line interface will interact with Kubernetes. And on the right side, you will find that you, will, you have worker nodes where all the containers or the pods will be hosted and it should have access to a image registry 
or a Docker repository. It could be something private, it could be something public, like uh, as we were speaking uh, for GitHub. Kubernetes capabilities, and this is this is really the the the, the powerful thing from Kubernetes because you can implement something like that, uh, something like this, as you're seeing in my screen, where you can have a, a service exposure exposed to to the public, and you can work internally on how to promote changes. For example, you have you you could have internal uh, set of services and, and pods that only your team will. Uh, Test like uh, UAT, um, like a UAT environment, for example. Then you can promote those same changes, meaning that you will update the service with the new version of the container of, of the container image for a canary in a canary way that only your free users will uh, be experiencing, uh, and that will be only five percent of the of your users. Then, if everything keeps working uh, as expected, you will promote your changes to a canary for your paid users, but you're not going to do it for all your users. You can do uh, the, the proper configurations to promote those changes to a service that only receives 5% of the traffic for, from, all, all the, from, from your site. Then, uh, if you have tested everything in, in, in three different ways, everything should be working, right? So you can promote this, those changes to production environment and that will be the 100% of the traffic. Um, um, you can you can wait as long as you want between these steps. Uh, you can wait for an hour or two hours, or if it's a delicate change, you can um, wait for a longer time, but it doesn't matter. The idea is that you can do this with Kubernetes. Um, so basically, as I was saying before, uh, you need to spin up uh, three masters and things like that. You will uh, actually, I would recommend you to to play around with uh, Kubernetes the hard way. It's a it's a tutorial that that's out there in GitHub. I can remember. Well, I didn't put the link here, but I can share it later. Uh, where you can spin up uh, Kubernetes uh, at, at, at the hard way at your at your way by setting up the instances by your own. Uh, configuring things, configuring certificates, and things like that, and you will notice that you want uh, uh, that that's something you don't you don't want to have. <laughs> so that's why you will use services like this Azure Kubernetes services, where uh, Azure will take care of all the master nodes for you. And the good thing is that you don't pay for them; uh, you only pay for the worker nodes, and that's a really good thing. It integrates with other Azure services very easily. You can create a clustering minutes, and actually, I'm gonna demonstrate that for you. But it, uh, because I don't have too much time, um, I, I'm not going to wait for for the cluster to be up and running. Uh, it supports Airbag for security purposes, and it has integrated logging and monitoring and many other things that uh, are 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 out of scope of this stuff. So let's co let's keep moving. How would you do DevOps with Azure? Well, uh, now you have. Um, DevOps Azure product, which previously was named as uh, BSTS. The good thing for Kubernetes is that you can have agents anywhere, and I'm gonna explain that why that is good in, in, in the demo. Uh, you have native Docker support, integrates easily with any cloud, integrates easily with Kubernetes, even if you install for some reason Kubernetes the hard way. Um, you can build once and deploy it anywhere and has extensions for co for common technologies like Terraform, Ansible, and things like that. Uh, so in a DevOps world, you will have uh, pretty much everything you need to implement your CI CD pipeline. And we, we, we're going to practice what uh, we're, we're, well, I just told you before, how to make deployments smoother. So finally, um, how, how would you do, this is like a improved version of a typical story with, um, with now that you are implementing DevOps, this is like the fact that like the end goal. It doesn't mean that you will have this from the very first day, although it will be good for new projects. But the idea with DevOps is that you could start um, working in, in small batches, as I was saying before, and don't get stressed if you don't have a pipeline from day one. Although it's very easy to create one, um, this is a progressive uh, improvement task that you need to be aware that you can uh, start doing small improvements uh, in, in, your, in the way that you are delivering the application. How to deploy in minutes then? 
You push your code changes to version control, integrated in an isolated environment like uh, Azure DevOps. You build portable Docker image. You deploy in a production-like environment. You run automated tests and repeat. Deploy and test again in other environments. And when you deploy in another environment, steps one to through three to three are not going to be uh, needed anymore because you already have everything that you need packed in a Docker image. And it is a matter just of uh, pushing the changes to 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 the environment. So. Um, that's enough talking for me. Um, it's demo time, so let's jump back to the to the to the to the console. If you're not seeing my screen, please let me know. Um, I'm going to create. A, this is. I'm. I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a, a cluster. You can have here a service Kubernetes service, and it's pretty easy. I'm gonna uh, create here a new one. And uh, let's say if uh, net demo, and let's say oh, it, it is going to use an existing. Um, let's use an existing resource group. It's going to .NET demo, and I'm gonna write here .NET demo. We pause. The you choose the region. You choose the Kubernetes version. This is the latest version. Uh, you can uh, choose the node sites, the, the worker nodes, and uh, by default uh, it has. Uh, DS2 B2, and it by default has three nodes. You can set up authentication here. It will create for you a service principle. Uh, this is the, 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 you will need this to interact with other Azure uh, services. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave this as default, but this is where you can enable airbag. Uh, next, you can uh, enable uh, or, or work with uh, pretty custom configurations for your network. But I'm gonna leave that as default. Uh, monitoring, you have, as I was saying before, you have login and monitoring enabled by default. Um, tax, if you would like to have tax to for center cost on things like that, um, you will wait a little bit as as the service principle is created. It will run a final validation, and that's it. You will have your after this is great. I'm gonna click here. And I'm gonna have my Kubernetes environment in just minutes. So let's create this. And that's it. That's that's how easy it is to create a cluster with Azure. So let's jump back to the to one I previously created um, for 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 demo purposes. I'm gonna um, create. Uh, this is the the the, cl the cluster that that I've been. Um, that, I, that I spin up for, for the demo. So you can see here that you will have things like um, what is important for us now is that you have the access to that cluster. And let me show you how you can do that. You can say here like um, view Kubernetes dashboard and you will need to install the Azure CLI. You will need to log in. Um, if you don't have Kube controller installed, you will need to install it. Then you need to um, download the, the credentials, which is um, which I'm going to do right now. You can um, run this command, and it will download the, the credentials. And it will change to you by default to the context to, to this uh, cluster. So let's jump back to, to, to browse the, the cluster. And you will see that, I'm, uh, that it's going to create a tunnel where you can um, uh, see that the graphic interface of the cluster that I just created, or well, that I previously created on Azure. And this is pretty awesome because you have the, the dashboard interface pre-installed. You don't have to configure anything. And you will have uh, here the usage, the, the memory, the, the, the workloads, the, and so on, the pods. Uh, you will have the service here, uh, services here. And uh, let's jump back to the service that I just published, an application that I just for demo purposes, which is which here you can see that says .conf, .NET Conf online. Um, the, uh, the way that I'm going to do is that to do this right now is that I will create a new um, uh, change here, and I'm gonna change this, and I'm gonna uh, push that. But let's start first by going to 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 uh, Azure DevOps. And this is how you will create a, a CI/CD pipeline. Let's start by creating a new project. 
I'm gonna create here a new project and let's call it uh, site, for example. I'm gonna leave it as private, but you can have it like uh, public. And you will can, here you can choose if you would like to use Git or TFS, or if you would like to um, have a dashboard uh, work with uh, Agile, CM CMMI, or Scrum. I'm gonna leave that as default because it's not the purpose of this demo right now. Um, and then it is going to have a empty code repository, but I'm going to migrate the code from um, the, 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 the code that I have here in, in my GitHub account. It, it is not that, I'm, I'm not doing this because you, Azure DevOps doesn't have support for GitHub, but it's because I didn't want to um, um, mess with, with a working demo with our working demo code, and I'm gonna uh, replicate things, and, and it will be, it, you will see that it, it is the same experience that you will have as if you were working with GitHub. Uh, so repos, I'm gonna click here with to, to repos, and um, I'm gonna import the code. So I'm gonna uh, click here, and I'm gonna copy this, and because it's public, I don't require any authentication and I'm gonna import it. Let's wait a little bit. Um, it, it doesn't, it, it won't take too much time. Uh, it is basically cloning the, the, the code to, uh, to the repository here. Then um, the next thing that I'm going to do is that I will um, clone the repository to my uh, local file. And uh, let's go here and you can click here, clone. I already um, have um, configured an SSH key on, on my computer, so I can easily do things like the, the, the things here, where I can, I'm gonna close the, the, the proxy here, because I'm gonna come back to this later. Uh, so let's go here, git clone, and it will um, download the, the code that I just uh, make, migrated. And you can see that um, has the code here, and it is pretty standard code. Uh, let me open that. Uh, let's here open, and it is the demo site. You can open that, and as you can see, it is pretty standard. But um, I'm gonna take the opportunity to um, review the some important files that we're going to use. This is, for example, the Docker file, and this is the way, this is the file that, that it will use to build the Docker image. So let's say, for example, that I, uh, that I run here the, the Docker build uh, command. Uh, I'm gonna tag it and I'm gonna create it uh, with my username and I'm gonna call it simple app and I'm gonna call it latest and I'm gonna say that the context, the context is the current one. Uh, oh, wait. I need to uh, enter to, to the, so let's run the same command again. Uh, has the Docker file here? Uh, let's see, Docker, ah, it, it, it was missing a D, Docker build. So um, it will, as I already had these images, these base images downloaded to my computer, it will skip that and it will start to compile it to compile the application. And uh, while this finishes, um, let me show you something here. This is the Docker uh, that for Mac that I that I have running. Uh, you can see that you can have Kubernetes here here installed. You can just click here, click here, and Docker will do everything for you. But what I really like is that you have a, a an easy way to switch back to the context for the Docker desktop, for example, or you can switch back to, to, the, to the one that we have uh, in Azure. So I'm gonna change this to, to the Docker, to the desktop version, and I'm gonna um, new, um, create a new uh, window here. Let's see, for example, uh, let's run this. CTL uh, get bots, for example. As you can see, there's 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 nothing there. Um, the, the, if I if I run this command previously, I will see the bots that were running in, in Azure. So let's jump back here 
and let's create, for example, um, for some reason, my, my environment is not working um, with local, the Kubernetes cluster is not working when, when it's pulling the local images. I'm gonna push this, uh, the, this image to my repository. Uh, as I said before, this is not necessary. It shouldn't be necessary because you will, you will use your local environment, but for demo purposes, I'm gonna leave this, but with a warning. So let's wait a little bit, and you can see that it is already pushed, and I'm gonna go back to the console here, and you will see that the uh, latest version is there. So now what I'm going to do is uh, usually what I will do to test everything is that I will run the, 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 the command here, but because I don't have too much time right now, let's go back to the, uh, to the deployment uh, YAML here for, that, uh, that I will use for, for Kubernetes. As I was saying before, you will, you will declare here a deployment. You will say here that you want three replicas, and this is the image that you're going to use. And this image is this this file is because it, it is in version control. I'm gonna uh, change latest with the version that that the pipeline is created. Uh, this is going to make sense when I'm doing, but for because I, I don't want to change uh, too much things to test locally. I'm gonna leave that as, as that. So let's see how will you run that. I'm gonna deploy that. Locally, just with a command, kubectl get pods. You will see that it's creating the 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 the, the pods, and you will see that it has created a service with an external API as local host. So let's see how it is running. So because it is exposed on port 80 and it's on local host, it should be working, right? Uh, let's go here uh, directly. And if I don't have anything else running on port 80, it should work, and it works, right? So I have, I'm have i running this version of the application on my machine locally. So let's jump back on how would you create something uh, for the, because I was saying before that someone or something will build the application. So this is how would you do uh, this. This is how would you create a pipeline. You will go to Azure DevOps, you will click here in pipelines, build, and create a new pipeline. And because I don't want uh, a YAML description right now uh, to have this as infrastructure as code, I'm going to use a visual designer so that everything that I'm doing makes sense for you and, and it is easy to understand. So I'm going to uh, choose the, the repository here, but as you can see, I can integrate it with any other code repository. I'm going to click here on empty job. And uh, I'm gonna leave that way. I'm gonna choose here, I'm gonna change here the agent to a hosted Ubuntu uh, because I'm compiling containers in, 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 the, in a Linux, um, in, in Docker for Linux. So I'm gonna choose that. Uh, this is how it will, you will see uh, which project is pulling from. Uh, this is going to be the pool of agents. Um, I'm gonna leave that as default and as, as well as I did locally, I'm gonna build the. This is this is the extension that I was talking about. I should have. I'm gonna build the image, and I'm gonna choose this, and I'm gonna uh, here create. I'm gonna start uh, uh, creating the the um, the connection to the to the registry that I have created here. It, it doesn't mean that you cannot integrate it very easily with Azure Container Registry in a private way, but I wanted to, to do it this way so that you can see that it is pretty easy to do that. Next, you're gonna click here on Manage. Sorry if I'm doing this too fast. <laughs> I'm gonna create here a new connection to my Docker Hub account. So let's click here, Docker Registry. Uh, let's here, let's choose here um, Docker Hub. I'm gonna just here Docker name uh, my super password I'm gonna verify that the connection is working uh, I think I didn't put uh, verify cool. okay so uh, the the connection has been created and I'm gonna jump back uh, to the to the screen here I'm gonna click here to update the connection and you can see that the connection is there 
I'm gonna run the command build, and if you don't, if you're not sure about where is the file, you can click here, and you will uh, see what the files you have for for the repository. Uh, you choose Docker file, and you will here uh, put an image name. So I'm gonna put my username here, and I'm gonna put here simple app, and I'm gonna uh, remove this. And I'm going to change this. Um, um, let's let's do this. Let's copy this. You will understand why in a minute why uh, why I'm doing this. Let's change this here to um, a variable that I will create, and that's it. This is how you will build the image. The next step is that you will um, push the image, right? So let's do this and let's. Choose here the uh, connection. This is where it, it is going to be very useful. And you will here push. Uh, it will change the text to push command. And it should be the same image that you just built. Uh, you should change this here. And uh, let's go change this. So the next step is that remember that I, that I mentioned that I'm going to change this. Uh, the latest to the to the version that is getting built. So that's why I need to create a, an environment um, that is version, for example, uh, and I'm gonna put it here one point uh, whatever. So let's go here, save that, and then what I'm going to do is that I need to um, replace that, and I'm gonna do is uh, do it as simple as running on a common line script. And I have the command. The command here. Uh, it is pretty standard. Uh, set a replace. It will replace what is latest, the the, the value latest with the version to uh, the the file the the .NET deployment YAML. Next, the way that the, this process will communicate with the release is uh, that it will publish the artifacts. Because I'm gonna do the deployment, the, the deployment YAML that I have here to to run the same command that I run locally in Azure. I need that file, so I'm gonna uh, put a name here, and I'm gonna say um, Kubernetes uh, YAML, for example. Let's see. Let's say that we only need to include in that artifact the YAML to make it not to 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 leave it as uh, light as possible. Um, um, let's hear um, YAML, for example, and let's keep that. So I'm gonna save it um, cube. I'm gonna save it on cube. I'm um, gonna keep using the default configuration that I had previously, and this is this is going to start creating the the the, the build. As you can see, it says um, version 20, but that's because I already have other pipelines created here in the project. And the cool thing here is that you will be able to see the logs uh, in, in, in live, and you can see every every phase what what is doing, and uh, you can see this later also. And it will initialize the agent, it will initialize the job, uh, it will do check out the the code, it will start building the image. But um, there's something that I'm that I'm missing here. Uh, as this is going to take a while because the agent uh, doesn't have the image as I already had in my computer. That's why you will uh, would like to choose uh, to have a hosted uh, agent in, in your environment for, for example, in Azure, so that this process is going to be more quick, more quicker. So uh, quicker, sorry. So let's go back to the to the to the pipeline because I, I, I'm missing something here. And as as when when it finish, we're going to review uh, that that is going that is working. So let's go edit the pipeline. And what I'm going to do is that after I push the the changes in, in my code, this will trigger a new build. So it will uh, it, it is as easy as going here triggers, and you will click here enable continuous integration. And I'm just gonna save it. And I'm just gonna save it. Um, Let's see if it already finished. No, but um, let's let's go quickly to create. This is the, the the CI pipeline. Let's create the CD part of the process. Let's create the CD the the pipeline the, the continuous delivery pipeline. I'm gonna choose as well uh, empty job, 
And this is where I'm going to connect everything. I'm going to close this here. And I'm going to choose the artifact that uh, I already built. Um, it is going to be the, the demo site that I just created. Uh, it, was all, it is going to be always using the latest version. It will use uh, this alias. Uh, I don't care. Just uh, leave it that there. And this is how you could enable continuous deployment trigger, uh, meaning that after the build is finished, it, this release will be um, triggered. So I'm going to leave that here. And uh, here, just let me show you this. You can, you can have here pre-deployment conditions, like meaning that someone needs to approve this deployment, this, this release, and you can do that for uh, uh, other stages. So let's call it here development, so it's clear why I'm doing this development. And as well, you will have an um, agent job. I'm going to as well use Ubuntu, and I'm going to uh, start adding something as simple as Kubernetes. You could have here the extension that is or that it integrates very easily with Azure uh, Kubernetes service, or you can integrate this with other clusters that you have uh, somewhere else. Luckily for us, the, this is the, the, the this extension is already here, and I'm gonna uh, integrate this with Azure. So I'm gonna here and gonna say subscriptions that I already have. If I wouldn't, if I didn't have this, I will go back uh, as, as uh, to the same screen as I was doing before for, for the Docker registry. So I'm going to choose here Microsoft Azure sponsorship. I'm going to um, click here. Uh, I, will, I need to click here and authorize. Oh, well, it, the pop up, it's, it's close. It's closed. Um, and it is going to open a new pop-up window because I need to log in to to the to the Azure to authorize this. So let's go here. And it is going to be as easy as that. I'm gonna sign in. And then it is going to be then it's going to authorize to Azure DevOps to communicate with uh, my Azure account. So and that's done. Uh, let's wait a little bit here. And after it, this uh, finishes, you will be able to see here the resource group. You will be able to see the cluster that, that, I, that I created before. And what I really like here is that you can specify the namespace of the, of the cluster where you would like to deploy this change. But if this is empty, it's going to do it in the default. So let's choose the resource group. Let's choose the cluster, uh, the simple app. Let's do it to the simple app that we already have. Um, let's everything leave everything as default. Uh, choose configuration files. You will then here uh, get to choose the artifact that it finished um, created, as you can see here, the deployment YAML. So I'm doing that because you don't have to worry about what to put here. It is uh, pretty easy to, to do that. So I'm going to save this here, and I'm going to uh, click that. And that's it. If you would like to create a new release, you will uh, manually, for example, you will create here, click create release. You will choose the, uh, the stage. Uh, you will choose the, the version. As you can see, it is the, 20, the version 20. And let's create, and you can go here to the release, and it is going to be the same screen. But the missing step is that you need to click here, deploy. Uh, you will hear uh, click here, demo purposes, for example, and deploy. And that's it. That's how you will create a, a pipeline. Um, the next thing, if but I don't, I don't think I have too much time. Is that um, uh, I will do something here, like uh, for example, uh, if I remember well, um, it is going to be here. Uh, let's change something here. Demo, for example. Let's save it. Um, let's say uh, demo change and commit that change. And let's push it. It doesn't have a graphic way here, but um, you will see here the code 
that it has a new change. Uh, it has the uh, demo change. You will see that a new trigger is going to be, a new build is going to be triggered. There it is, demo change. Uh, let me show you just one thing here. You will see that in, in at my repo, um, you will have the latest version and the, the version that it just built. So basically, the, this is the same. Um, it is going to happen the same thing. Uh, I, I already see. We already see that uh, the build is working. Let's see if the, the the release is working. Good, it is working. So let's jump back to to the to the um, cluster for simple app that I have in Azure. And um, let's clear the screen. QCTL get. You will see here that it's creating the, the new container and it is adding a new container image and a new a new pod. For, I'm sorry, but it is keeping the uh, the other three that we already have. This is it is running update. See, it is terminating the other pods and it is doing the deployment in a safely manner. You can see here that I have the service and I have the external API as well here as I was seeing before in the console, and the release one finished, but uh, the, because the build it ha hasn't finished yet, it is working. Uh, I, will, I will keep seeing the same uh, screen without the change, but I'm gonna leave this here. Um, if you have any other question, uh, if you have questions, uh, uh, I think it, it's the time now, and as, I'm, as I finish answering the questions, I'm gonna, go here and update and you will see that the new change will be here. So um, that's all for me. All right, Christian. How we doing? All right. Doing great. So we have a, we have a question from the chat room. I want to make sure we cover um, OREct okay. says, is YAML build available for .NET Framework builds now? Yes, um, for, for it, as, as you were uh, able to see, uh, when you create here a new pipeline, um, the, actually the default option is uh, YAML. What, what it is not supported yet is that the, the, build, the build definition that I did here to export it to a YAML definition but uh, I think that will come later. But yes, YAML is supported. Any other question? So oh, that's so cool. That is yeah. yeah, that's cool. It is the new version here. You will see here that it, the new release will be triggered automatically. Hey, there is. So this is truly one click deployment. I just pushed, uh, well, I didn't click anything. I just pushed the change and I let Azure uh, DevOps do the rest. So we've got some folks that are in the chat room that are saying they really like this content. They can't wait to see it. On, on a replay so they can go out and check out videos on demand. Of course, there will be video on demand available here on Twitch. We're gonna also cut this video, uh, put it together on our YouTube channel so folks can see that as well. And there's our ASP.NET Core website. That's cool. Great stuff. Cool, awesome. All right. Why so um, MagicNet asks, uh, how did you disable the old releases link? Where? Uh, I'm so you've got exactly the releases and the that. releases star link. I'm actually kind of excited to hear that answer too. Uh-huh. How do you stop this? Is that what you're saying? or? or? Does he have the releases start? 
Mm-hmm. No, I meant on the sidebar. I think I think what he's asking is uh, on the sidebar. You see how you've got the releases star tab. Um, when I look at that in my own, uh, I see releases with no star and then releases with a star. Um, do you know if that's something that is like a a VSTS to Azure DevOps migration thing, or do you do you do you have any insight as to why some of the C2 releases tabs? Yeah, that might be the reason because uh, I created this project from scratch, so okay. that that that's why you might be seeing something different. That's because, probably uh, I think for you you won't see that. Cool. All right, makes sense. Awesome presentation. Yep. So, uh, where can we go to get some more information? Do you have uh, uh, some resources for us? Uh, yep, uh, you can always find me on my blog or, or, or on Twitter. I um, publish a uh, blog post every week, uh, so you can find me here. Here's my contact information, and I'll be happy to answer any question that the audience have. Awesome, and let's put up your information real quick. There we go. So there's your Twitter, so folks can can uh, connect with you. And there's your there's your blog up top. Great stuff. Yeah. Um, cool. I think we're uh, I think we're good here. Thank you so much, Christian. We really appreciate you joining us here for .NET Conf this year. This has been great. Cool. Thanks. Thanks to you. Thanks, guys. Alrighty. Thanks.